And we are back in the studio with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes, she's a garden extraordinaire, has a lot of talent, beautiful gardens. Mm -hmm. And so I can't believe the number of tomatoes you are picking. Stop <laughs> bringing those to the kitchen. There's mountains of them. It's ridiculous. It is. Uh, cucumbers. We need more. We got to create a relish. A cucumber soup, something. These are we so need recipes. If you have a good recipe for fresh tomatoes, yeah. fresh cucumbers, fresh zucchini, shatter. yeah, we need we need some ideas. I love the uh, um, uh, uh, jalapeno soup you made this mm -hmm. week. It was, was kind good. of a so just, just peppers and some zucchinis it going zucchini in, in it. some fresh yeah. herbs. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. my mouth's watering just thinking about it. It was so yeah. good. But that's the beauty of uh, gardening. Yes, it forces you to figure out. I grew what this I new, <laughs> new uh, Japanese uh, Oriental eggplant. What do you do with those? Oh, here we go. Oh wait, I don't it, like eggplant. It, <laughs> <laughs> so you just kind of get creative yeah. with this. Kind of, how do I can this? How what kind of leathers can you make with that? Right. What kind of, uh, um, I mean, uh, sangria can you make with cucumbers? <laughs> you can do it with mint and or basil or. Kind of fun to kind of play with those I don't know things. About that, but we'll see. Yeah. So, what do you got for us? Well, yes, we are harvesting lots of things, uh, but I also know we're kind of getting to the end of the season. It's officially fall. It is now. Yeah. Um. So I put together my fall to do list. Perfect. I know you have yours. Yeah. This one's mine. I love it. Love to share it. I'll try not <laughs> to jump in. <laughs> <Yeah. Ooh. laughs> we'll see how that works out yeah. so first thing i recommend and i i do this every year and people go oh yeah i should have done that but if you have a certain vegetable certain tomato that you just loved and you thought it did really well keep the tag or take a picture of the tag because i cannot tell you how many times people come back in and go i I bought it here last year. It was green. <laughs> it had green leaves. It got up head high. It was red. Right. And there, I cannot tell you how many varieties of tomatoes, yeah. peppers, flowers, yeah. you name it. Um, and I will guarantee you, I cannot remember all of them. Yeah. So just taking a quick picture of that tag or throwing it in a baggie and saving it. If yep. you're not into digital, you can still save it. it Everyone will... has a camera phone. It's too easy to go click. I got it. Yeah. So and is just... it, can I find it in my pictures <laughs> later? That's the question. That's a good question. So... Um, the other thing is if you had like a container gardening combination that you really liked, like you put certain flowers together or certain colors and you're like, Oh my gosh, I love that. Take a picture of it because yeah. you will not re remember next year what it was. Um, so it just kind of saves you that time later on. Um, the other thing to think about is where you put things this year. Ask yourself, did they do well? So did my tomatoes do good in this spot? Um, maybe you need to rotate things around the yard. It's always wise, especially with vegetables, yeah. to rotate things around. Even yeah. flowers. Yeah. So just kind of taking some notes taking some pictures can just save you a lot of aggravation next spring. I think the reason gardeners forget what they planted last year, mm -hmm. I think we're going to blame it on eggnog. Something, it's that <laughs> holiday season, something about, we've got the holidays coming. So you ended in fall, you're about to go with spring. And then egg, I think eggnog gets in the way or something. Blanks your memory. Yeah, huh? so it's <laughs> just like erases stuff. I can't remember. <laughs> um, pull out those tired looking annuals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh they're gosh. just bringing you down. I know you want to wait till the very last second and you have the frost and get your money's worth out of them. But seriously, now is a great time to get rid of those calabacoas, the geranium, things that are just looking ee. -ee. Yeah. And it's great to get those violas in, the pansies, the snapdragons, the hookahs. Uh, the sooner you kind of get them in and get them rooted out, they're going to be much happier going through winter time. I think people they want to get every their money's worth and they're afraid to kill something. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's looking you know it's so big it's, it treated me so well. Mm -hmm. But then you're doing disjustice for for the things that you're going to plant later. So the the violas, the pansies, mm -hmm. the winter blooming things, right. they need their due as well. So if you give mm -hmm. them time to root out, you'll get more enjoyment out of those if you kill the things now <laughs> pull them out making more room so right. you can have color year round here oh definitely because it's so mild right. if you time it right mm -hmm. and this is the this is the transition right now definitely 
So if you have some things that are like, some sedums or succulents that you know are not winter hardy or say there's something you want, maybe some coleus you want to bring in and treat like a houseplant yeah. or mandevilla. Uh, now is the time to think about getting those ready to move oh, yeah. in because that cold's going to strike when you're not ready for it yeah. and then you're going to be caught flat footed. So a lot of those pots that have been outside for the season you, you probably want to treat them uh, before you bring them back inside. So the systemic granules are excellent for that. Um, they'll kill off any insects that are, are hanging out in that soil. Yeah. Uh, the flies, those little gnats that fungus love to gnats. hang around yeah. the fungus gnats. So you kind of want to get them treat, treated and cleaned up so you can move them inside. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people wait too long. Then they find out a frost is coming in. They're well, like, oh, my God. It's, it's Halloween. Yeah. Halloween is our first frost. So you got three mm -hmm. weeks. You got you got some time. But it can well, hit transition. early, too. If you just take that, that coleus and bring it indoors, you will be stunned at the crawly, creepy things that come <laughs> out of the pot when you bring it indoors. Right. So I tell, I say trim it back so it's so it's more houseplant size mm -hmm. instead of patio size. Just get right. it down to size. Spray the foliage. Mm -hmm. I would say with triple actions, or organic yeah, spray, because there's things on the foliage and mm -hmm. there's things in the ground. Then you treat it with the the systemic granules. That'll go through the soil, killing off the insects, the icky, you, creepy, it's like fungus gnats. You don't want them in your house. Centipedes. And, I mean, <laughs> just all kinds of stuff are in there. Right. And then bring it indoors yeah. before Halloween. Mm -hmm. You'd be happy that you did that. You'd be happy, and you know it. My pants. <laughs> You'd be happy anyway. Okay. So it's a good time to shape up. So those summer blooming shrubs. So the uh, butterfly bush yeah. that have kind of gone out of bloom, trim the blossoms off. You don't yeah. want to do major pruning. Don't do that. But you can trim up your blossoms on some of the things. Rose of Sharon's, yeah. uh, butterfly bush. What are some other things that kind of You bloom? might be able to trim off the rosebuds. And mm -hmm. you got Keep enough blooming. time, they might actually bloom again. I mean, right. it's not. that would not surprise me a bit. Or it will hold on to that new flower bud through mm -hmm. for all winter. Yeah. So it's trim true. back the rose, but the spent rose buds. Right, right. But don't do any major pruning, but just kind of cleaning them up, making yeah. them look a little spiffier. Give them a haircut. Yeah, because they've they've done hard work all summer long. Yeah. They need a little cleanup. Um, also think about where you want to put some evergreen shrubs in. I like it. So we look at our large, so many of our yards are just blooming stuff or just uh, deciduous stuff. So they're leaves right now, but they're going to be dropping those leaves in another month or so. And then you have a yard that just looks naked, naked. Yep, so better. think about where you want to put those evergreens. We have some beautiful evergreen trees and shrubs in right now. Uh, it's the best time to look at those things because you're not going to get distracted by all the others. <laughs> so because uh, every yard. What do you always say? Twenty five percent, or more? Uh, yeah, twenty percent should be of the of the of the of your plants should be evergreen of some sort. Evergreen trees, evergreen right. shrubs, something. Like, and I would say you can do evergreens in containers. So if you got a Ooh. flower bed, flower garden like mm -hmm. container, and you want a, a holly in there or or yeah, a medina or definitely they do really well in containers. Mm -hmm. through, when they'll keep their foliage. They look fantastic. Right. They almost are more handsome than, than uh -huh. some of your flowery things. In yeah. Winter. And we'll do that. We, we yeah. rip out some of that flowering stuff and put in some pretty evergreens that we can kind of decorate through the fall and winter with. So good idea, dear. Yeah, full of it. He's Alberta thinking. spruce. You want right. a holiday looking Christmas tree looking look at the front door? It's a great <laughs> one in containers. It's the number it one is. seller as far as evergreen yeah, goes. Yeah, it's very fun to decorate. Um, and also, I think and this is one I know you mentioned, but fertilize. Yeah. Can't people, you need people to listen. fertilize. Yeah. You know, we're, people come from different parts of the country, and I get it. You never really had to fertilize there, but you're not there yeah. anymore. Yeah. And it makes a huge difference in how your trees go through the winter, uh, how they wake up in the spring, and just how they perform throughout the year. The, the most important feeding of the entire year is autumn. And you mark it by whenever you see the aspens turn gold or the maples turn red, that's your cue. It's time to fertilize. Mm -hmm. The most important, you need to grain, don't use, don't use water soluble, use granular organic fertilizers, preferably bought from Waters Garden Center, <laughs> but we make our own, but just use an organic granular yeah. food and it's going to be a game changer. Thank you, Lisa. Great mm -hmm. advice this week. <laughs> Excuse me, Lisa's guide to uh, better gardens. Be right go. back after this.